In this video, you're going to learn how by focusing on one key aspect related to your app can actually help you throughout all of your development, your launch, and the scale of your app-based business. Focusing on just one thing related to your app. Now, make sure you stick around until the end because honestly, this one thing can affect you right now and throughout the entire lifetime of your app. It's that important. Now, first, if you're new around here, my name is Kristen and I'm the co-founder of Coaching No Code Apps, where we help business owners and industry experts build custom apps to either start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding, no technical background required. So we're gonna dive right into this and I'm gonna share my screen with you. So there's one thing that I want you to be able to identify right now. And this is going to help you throughout four stages that we're going to talk about. And these stages, uh, you're going to be going through these stages with your app and with your business ultimately. So your app is essentially a solution to a problem. We talk about this a lot, but on the other side of every problem, there is a desired outcome. Now, a lot of people think about their app as being that outcome. So they get to the point where they identify the problem that they're solving, but then they kind of end with their app as being the solution and the outcome. But in reality, the, while their app is the solution, the solution is the thing that provides the outcome. The app in and of itself is not the outcome. So you need to look at what are your users wanting to accomplish in solving the problem that they have, right? And this is the problem that your app is solving. So we're looking at an outcome here. So ask yourself, what does your target market want to achieve? Again, we're looking at outcomes. So let's say that you are building an all-in-one platform that helps certain companies in your market eliminate the need for a bunch of different software subscriptions and work with your app only to support and run their business. Now, the problem those people or those potential users might be experiencing are, you know, it might be related to the high costs of all the different software platforms that they're currently using. It might be related to the disjointed experiences that their, that business is customers are experiencing because you know they're using all these different platforms or maybe the business is having to spend a lot of money for the the technical maintenance all, of all the connections of these software tools and, and all those kinds of things now those are the problems and the app this all-in-one platform is the solution but it's not the outcome the outcome well those are things like increased profit margins because now the company doesn't have to spend so much on all these different software platforms. The company doesn't have to spend a bunch of money hiring people to fix the different connectivity problems that they're experiencing, all of that type of stuff. So the outcomes in this example are related to money. They want to save money, right? Or maybe they want to make more money by having their business more streamlined. Okay. So you have the problem, you have the solution, or at least an idea of what the solution will be, that's your app. Now you need to identify the outcome. So I want you to think about what the outcome is that your app is providing. Now, when you have that, you're gonna be able to really, in a much more simple way, you're gonna be able to go through four different stages of your app's development, launch, and growth keeping this outcome in mind or these outcomes. So we're gonna talk about these four different stages now. So first, we're gonna talk about your messaging. Now, most people or most entrepreneurs or people who are building apps, they're really good at talking about the solution, their app. They're really good at talking about all of the really cool ideas that they have that have gone into their app or that will go into their app. They're great at talking about the different features and the different specs and all the really cool things their app does. But when you talk to your potential users and your target market, people who you're trying to bring on board your app, this isn't usually what resonates with them first. 
the first thing that really resonates with people are the outcomes because that's ultimately what they really want. They're investing in a solution only because they want the desired outcome. They don't just want to pay for an app so that they can just use the app for no reason. They want to achieve an outcome. So if you can identify this outcome that they actually want, it's going to help you position your messaging in a much more effective way because now you can talk to those potential users with a, a forward thinking mindset. You can talk to them about actually, you know, not just giving them the solution, but enabling them to achieve the outcome that they're after. And when you can do that, your conversion rates on bringing in users or, or even beta users, those will go up a lot more. Now that's not to say that being able to talk about the solution in and of itself, so the different features or processes, that's still important. But usually that comes after being able to talk about the outcomes or rather the benefits. So you always wanna be able to speak to the benefits instead of just being able to talk about the specs or the technical features. And when you know the outcome that you're providing, and this is the outcome that your target market is after, your messaging becomes a lot stronger and a lot more impactful too. So the next stage that this is really gonna help you with is your development. Now, when you are, are providing a specific outcome or when you're aiming to provide a specific outcome, this is really, really gonna help you when it comes to your app's overall development. Now, the reason is because when most people approach building their app, they think about the solution first. Again, it, this goes back to all the cool ideas that they, they want their app to have or they envision their app having, all of the cool technical processes, all of the cool features and functionalities, right? They want their app to have all of those things and so they build all of those things. But if you don't have a specific outcome, that you're aiming for with those features, with all that different functionality, then your app can become really bloated, a little bit convoluted, kind of messy. Now, this can lead to a number of different things. First, it can make it really hard for you to finish and launch the app. It can make it really hard for you to launch the app early or sooner rather than later. I've seen this easily lead people to having one year plus time frames just with the development of the first versions of their apps. And we don't want that. We want you to be able to move more quickly. And so by being able to focus on the outcome, that will help you narrow down the actual features and functionality you're putting in place for your app, right? So that's going to help you with your development. And a way that you can kind of make sure you're staying on track with this is by asking yourself, in order for X, so the X is the outcome, in order for X to be true, this must happen. So take that outcome, literally the thing that you have ideally written out right here, take the outcome and ask yourself, in order for this outcome to be true, this must happen. Now, the this must happen part is the feature in your app, or the process that your app enables people to go through, or the functionality that you're building into your app. Now, if you think of something, if you have an idea for a feature or, or you know, a feature set that doesn't actually need to exist in order for the outcome to be true, then you can feel confident waiting until later to build that feature maybe not even building that feature at all, but instead of deciding now, letting feedback dictate that and being able to get that feedback because you've been able to now launch earlier rather than later. So in order for this outcome to be true, this must happen. And that's your feature. So ask that question all, all along the way, ideally before you start your development. But if you've already started, start asking it now. Make, make sure that you're staying aligned and you're keeping your development focused, again, on the outcome. Now, 
we're going to jump into the next step here. And that is pricing. This is another big one. And this is an area where a lot of people struggle, not just with their apps, but with any product, with any service, with any business. It can be hard to find or to land on the right price point. There are a lot of ways that you can go about it. You can look at competitors. You can, you know, you can look at the kind of general, what you see in the market for pricing, and, and that's all fine, right? You're gathering information that way. But uh, a, an arguably better way to do it is to focus on the outcome. If you have the outcome in mind that your users or your target market is looking to achieve, then you can associate that with a value. Right? What is this outcome worth to your target market? I'm going back to this all-in-one platform example that we talked about earlier. Right? We're eliminating the need for all of these different software platforms. We're combining them into an all-in-one app that can help companies increase their profit margins by reducing a bunch of expenses that they, they'll no longer need to be, to be making or to be incurring. Well, there's a value in that. Right? And there's actually a really tangible value in that example because we're talking about money here. So if you focus on basing your pricing on outcome, then you can start to uncover that value and you can start to see you know, at what point is this price point no longer, um, no longer producing a, a more valuable outcome for my user. Right? So instead of just kind of blindly choosing a price point or just going off of what your competitor is doing, not knowing how they landed there or, or what led them there in the first place, you can actually look at your specific situation, your specific target market, your specific app and help that guide your pricing. And when you do that, it's a lot easier for you on the other side when you're launching and when you're actually scaling your business now, because you don't have to necessarily you know, go through this phase that a lot of people do where you're just constantly throwing out different price points. You don't have to start by just kind of, you know, throwing, uh, throwing a dart at a map and just, you know, going where it lands, right? That's what a lot of people do. They just come up with a random number. And then when they launch, they figure out, okay, this isn't the right number. And so there are just a ton of different price jumps all at once really quickly. And what that leads to is potentially a poor user experience, maybe a little bit of a disjointed experience, especially if you're trying to get everybody up to the same price point, or it could just lead to you having to have, you know, 10 different ongoing uh, payment options if you're you know, grandfathering people in, and, and that can create a lot of problems on the back end for yourself. So again, you know, by, by simply focusing on the outcome, you can really guide your pricing, which can actually prevent a bunch of other problems from happening on the other side. So it really is a really helpful aspect to, to consider as you go. Now, the last stage I want to talk about is your overall scaling and growth stage. So you have created the first version of your product, you have priced it, you've been having conversations or you know, putting up copy that's converting users. Now you have your app up and running, you have users on board that are paying you, well, now you wanna grow, you wanna scale. Well. By focusing on the outcome, even in this stage, especially in this stage, you can really skyrocket that scale. You can really accelerate it. And the way, the way in which you should go about doing this is asking yourself, okay, so you have, you have your outcome, right? And you've been focusing on this outcome the entire time. Now, how can I produce a better outcome? That's a question you have to ask when you're scaling. How can I do X, right? How can I enable X rather for my target market better and better and better and better and better? If you focus on that as you're scaling, it's going to evolve not only your product, but also your business as a whole. We're, we've been having some conversations about this 
uh, recently, where you know we're we're talking about focusing on providing results for your users versus just trying to you know build out all the ideas that you could possibly have for your app. Now, what happens to a lot of people is they go through these initial stages where they're building their, their app, they're building their first version and they launch. And then when they get to the other side, it's like they, you know, now they have some initial users on board and now they're just trying to do anything and everything they possibly can to get more users on board. Now, that's not a bad thing, right? But you have to have something to focus on as a way to increase or expand that user base. So some people approach this as, you know, kind of like uh, throwing all the spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks. We don't want to take that approach. Instead, we want to focus on the outcome so that we can know what sticks early on and then make it stick better and better and better and better and better. And when you can do that, you become a specialist rather than a generalist. People know that you're not just solving their problems and producing the outcome they're after, but you're doing it in a really, really good way, right? Uh, you're solving the problem effectively, you're providing the correct or desired outcome, and maybe now you're doing it in a way that is even more convenient. Or maybe you're doing it by offering uh, additional services or additional add-ons that make the experience even better or cut back on the time or, you know, all of these different things. You're just doing the same thing, but better and better and better. Now, you can do all of these things by just knowing the outcome that you are aiming to produce that your users are wanting to achieve, right? By knowing that one piece of information, you can completely change your messaging. You can really refine and hone in on your development. You can find the right pricing early on and you can scale so much faster. And again, it's really easy to just think about the solution to think about the features, just to think about your app and all those technical components. And when you're the one building it, that can be really exciting and, and that's understandable. But you have to think about this too, because this is what's really going to kind of allow you to achieve the full picture or you reach your bigger picture goals versus just, you know, getting the app up and running, for example. So, I hope this is helpful for you. This is something that we practice in our own business, certainly uh, with our clients. And this is something we kind of will, will just shout from the rooftops because it's so important. So again, I hope that was helpful. And if you want to dive deeper into making sure that you're building your app correctly, we actually have a free training that you can sign up for and, and uh, join in right now. If you head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop, we'll take you through a process that will kind of guide you step by step through make sure you have the right strategy for your app, making sure you're headed in the right direction with your app. And if you've already started building your app, I encourage you to go through it anyways, because it's going to help you make sure that you are moving forward in the right direction so you don't have to waste time backtracking later on. So you can head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash workshop and sign up for that now. All right. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.